Digi here eats a lot, but I've got a solution. Stick around guys, it's gonna be a little bit gross, but we're gonna learn something today. Hello, my name is Richard Royster, Associate Principal of Lafayette High School, and I love learning new things. This here is Digi. He is my office pet. He's a bearded dragon. He is about three months old. Today, we're going to feed him and learn about insect feeders for your bearded dragon or your exotic pet. He eats a lot. One day, he ate about 20 insects, and at about 10 cents each, you can see that really adds up quite fast. I feed him half mealworms and half dubia roaches. And you really just can't get dubia roaches in pet stores around here. I tried crickets. He does not like crickets at all. So he'll eat one or two and then he will just stop eating. So today we're gonna to feed him. Let's see how that goes and see how many he'll eat today. Okay, today is Sunday. So today's the day he gets his vitamins. You can see I've got the bugs in here. Uh, you just put a little vitamin in there and shake them around a little bit. So it is feeding time. Let's see how he does. We also have some dandelion greens and basil in here. And hopefully, oh, look at him go. He is tearing up, mm. There we go, another one, another one. He is, look at him, he prefers the roaches. He sees the mealworms, he knows what they are. He's had them before. But he is picking out the roaches first. Those are his favorite. Look at him, going all the way across the dish. Look, we're not letting you get away. Look, there you go, good job, did you, you got him. Now. Time for the mealworms. There he goes. He's latching onto the mealworms. It helps when they move a little bit. It certainly gets his attention. And he's not a fan of the greens, as you can see. Most young little reptiles who are omnivores prefer the protein earlier in life. When he gets older, he will switch over to more of the vegetable matter. But right now, he is just big on his bugs. At about 10 cents each, um, this could run two bucks a day, and, and uh, that adds up over time. So we need a solution where I don't have to go buy them all the time. Mealworms are pretty easy to raise, and so are dubia roaches. And today I'm going to show you how to raise your own dubia roaches. But let's see how many Digi will eat. Want some greens? Oh, look at that. He ate some greens. What a good boy. Two and one. Bonus point. I think he went for the roach and ate the greens instead. Good job on the greens. Get a little on your chin there. Wipe that off. There you go. Look. There's more. Get him. Oh, two and one. Again, bonus. And the mealworm, you want it? He sees the roaches in the bowl I've got over here and he wants them with those. All right, let me get them out. There's another one. another one and another one goodness he's hungry non-stop eating eat the mealworm for God's sakes save a save a roach for tomorrow I think I've lost count I'm not sure how many he's eating there you go so you feed them about as much as they'll eat in 10 minutes. I think we're up to about two dozen. I think we have a personal best here. You want any more? Look, there's another one. He's trying to hide. There he is, you want him? We're only about four minutes in, and it looks like he is stuck. Oh, there's another one. All right, let's wrap it up. You don't need any more. There you go. Good boy. He's eaten all the roaches. I think I had 15 of each, and I got three mealworms left. Two. 28 bucks. We're up to about $2.80. And look at the pouch under his throat here. He is stuffed. He is going to have to work that down. He looks done. <laughs> all right. Good job, Digi. Let's head back to the cage. Dubia roaches are considered by many to be the ultimate feeder insect. We have some here 
This is a female. Look how glossy she is. She's an adult female. This is an adult male. Notice the wings. Now they can't fly, but they do have wings that helps them fall softly in the event uh, that they're falling for whatever reason. I don't know. But as you can see, they're perfectly harmless. They don't skitter around. They, they, they live in the uh, tropical area of Argentina and in that surrounding area. They don't cohabitate with people. They're very clean animals. They're very also very easy to raise. Whoops, crawling on my arm. Now this is a freshly molted nymph. Obviously too big for Digi to eat. So when this one gets fully mature, it'll be able to breed and create more little roaches for Digi to eat. This one is just too big at this stage. All you need is a dark plastic tub with hiding spots, heat, and food. They can't climb or fly. They're easy to contain. They're also very healthy for your animal with plenty of protein and minerals such as calcium. They're low in fat and over their lifespan there are a variety of sizes. So they can be good feeders for a variety of animals. Bearded dragons, geckos, frogs, tarantulas, scorpions, small snakes, even hedgehogs. You could even feed them to your chickens for extra protein if you wanted. Dubias are from the tropical region of around northern Argentina. They do not do well in temperate climates. They need a consistent temperature over 80 degrees to breed and prefer it even warmer than that. So if they get out in your house, they're just gonna end up dying. All right, let me show you how to create a breeder tank for these dubia roaches. So the first thing you need to breed your dubias is a giant plastic tub with smooth sides so they can't climb. They cannot climb smooth surfaces, so you just have to be sure that it's really smooth. The next thing you need to do is you need to be sure that it has adequate ventilation. So here is the lid and it's going to lock, which is going to be nice, but we need to create some air holes. Let's get busy. Now that we've created a complete mess, I'm going to smooth these edges up a little bit because I'm going to cover it with an adhesive screen that'll be sure that the roaches stay inside. So the holes are all in and the edges are cleaned up. Now I just want to put a screen over it to be sure just in case we don't want any roaches out. Now I did find this adhesive screen at the local big box store, so it's very easy to apply. That's, that part is not sticky, it is heat activated. So you put it on here, you use a blow dryer, and then it sticks to it and you're done. So here we go. Okay, that is one down, four to go, and that should keep the little guys in. Okay, we've got the lid all ready. It has plenty of ventilation holes, which is very important for dubia roaches. We've got the tub all cleaned out. Now we need to be sure and add some housing. Most people use egg crates. Now, I, usually you would stand them up vertically like this, but this is, bin is not quite tall enough, so I'm just gonna lay them flat. I'm also gonna do a little bit of an experiment and see if they prefer a more natural hide. So I'm gonna add this in there as well. There we go. Now we're just gonna add some food. I have here a little food dish that I've added some of the mesh screen to the side just to be sure that the babies can get up in there. And I have made this very durable dish so that I can put vegetables in here and fruit in here and it won't contaminate the whole thing. So this will go in there. The food bowl will go in that as well. I am feeding a mixture of dog food and oats that I have ground up. So we'll just put that in here as well. That should be plenty to get them started. You don't want to give them too much because it will go bad. In fact, I'm going to take some of that out. There we go. And I'm not going to use water crystals. Some people use water crystals that you can get at your local garden center. But if you just give them moist fruit, that is all they need. Just be sure and change it out frequently. So I have here some orange slices that I will set in.
And then here is the setup. So you can see this setup I got, very simple. We have the food over here. We have plenty of housing over here. The, the fruit will act as the moisture, plenty of food there in the uh, dog bowl or in the bowl with the dog food and the oats and just lots of hiding areas in here. When they get up in here, there's just tons of area for the roaches to hide in, which is something that they really like. Now let's just put them in. All right, guys. The gang is all here. If you're a little squeamish, you might want to turn away. And there they go. The whole family, guys. Look at them go into their new home. Aren't they adorable? Whoops, you get in there. Now they will just run and find their place to hide in their new home. And hopefully they will make lots of little babies I am also going to create what's called a feeder tank. So this is my breeder tank. I will be creating a feeder tank that periodically I will pull the babies out, put them in so that they're easier to get to when I need them. And also I can do what's called gut loading, feeding them the ideal foods for Digi so that he can be as healthy as possible. Well, that is it guys. I hope you learned something today. Even if it was a little weird or maybe a little gross, there's always something to learn. I hope you'll always come back and learn something different. Who knows what I got next time? So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hit that like, subscribe. I hope to see you in the next video. Students, if you would like to be in a video, just come up and let me know what your idea is. We will put something together and just have a good time with it. Thanks for coming by, guys. We will see you in the next one.